Hello and welcome to the Kiev Independence YouTube channel. I'm Oleksandr Hrebet and today I'm joining Oleksandr Karasov from the Ukrainian military and tactical clothing brand MTAC to examine several samples of the Russian military uniforms. Samples of uniforms were passed to us by Ukrainian soldiers from the Territorial Defense Forces and Special Operation Forces. The uniforms were worn by the Russian infantry and reconnaissance troops in Kharkiv and Donetsk oblasts. This video is not aimed at comparing Russian and Ukrainian uniforms, as there are numerous variations of those produced by both state and private companies. Proper testing also requires special equipment. However, we will show you some notable trends. This is actually the uniform that was handed to us by the Special Operation Forces soldiers. The first thing that catches the eye is that the uniform is quite well made. You see here signs of wear, but all the seams are still intact. You can notice very neatly done seams. I didn't understand why they sewed buttons using regular threads here, because this is what can happen. I won't tear apart the whole uniform for you. You saw how easily the button came off. An elastic band for convenience. It's quite wide and quite well done. The fabric is double-sided, so we're looking at their summer and autumn camouflage. The fall one doesn't look good. This coloring is almost monochromatic, it doesn't camouflage the fighter effectively. This coloring is quite light, I think it should work well. Here, on the flaps, this is what the buttons should look like. Pull on it with all your strength. No, I can't tear it off, I'll probably break the button. These buttons are on straps. This is what I told you about. This is the most reliable type of attachment, but they didn't use it here for some reason. In our combat pants, we put our attachments right there. Though we often use hooks, and buttons are an alternative solution. The first thing I see here is that it's made of weaker material, worse than the uniform we examined before. In this jacket, the Velcro is worn out. It's of very low quality. Here, it's polyester. You can try it. It doesn't hold. It will probably be weak. Like this. It doesn't hold either. Here's our Trident Chevron for comparison. Try to tear it off the same way. No. And here I attached it as they did again. Hold it there and try to tear it off the same way again. I'm not even putting any effort. The trident has won. By the way, there's a tear already. That's what I meant about the quality of tailoring. You wear it for a bit and there's already a tear. Then, if we look at the buttons with you, we will see that the first buttons were used most actively. Look. They are already resumed. I don't understand this lining. Polyester lining for a light jacket that looks very bad. And its function is actually unclear. Most likely, they used insulating lining here. Such a jacket will make the fighter sweat even if the upper material somehow breathes. They made it from whatever they had. The haberdashery here is in the coyote color. Coyote is a completely different color. So we have a jacket in their pixel camouflage, the haberdashery is in coyote, this zipper is in another color, and there's a bright green elastic band. No one bothered to match the colors or anything. It's like a cheap mass market finish. Another interesting point, let's laugh at the Russians a bit, is the fly. There are no buttons and no traces of them. It doesn't close at all. Natural ventilation, I guess. Mm. 
They are probably given not to the average Russian cannon fodder, but maybe to the airborne troops or special forces. It's a copy of American pants. Let's compare with these American pants. It's not even clear these are pants. The thing is, they are made so that they can be worn by a person in field conditions. The first pant leg is ready. By the way, we can compare the first pant leg right away. Look, the flap shape is the same. We open it and it's a similar zipper. Unfortunately, it's American-made. On these pants? Look, here it is, ideal USA, and here's ideal. The zippers are slightly different. The Russians used an even better one. They used a matte finish. Look, here's a completely different Velcro. It's plastic. Try it. It's impossible to tear it off here. No, no, no. This is what Russians spend for their elite units. So they have their disposable troops and the elite ones. This is body armor. I'm closing it now. I don't like it. Look. Here's an insert, it says up to the body, but what's this? This insert isn't packed in an airtight package. We'd need to cut it and see what it is. But in any case, this insert looks like it doesn't cover this part. Here it ends. Probably here, there's a dampener in the body armor that reduces damage. If a piece of shrapnel hits you, even in your armor, it can penetrate by 3-4 centimeters. Do you understand? It can break ribs. It can break your ribs, it can damage your internal organs, depending on the angle and where the piece of shrapnel hits. This is aramid fabric, and it's not packaged at all. Can I have a glass of water? I'm curious myself. Why did I ask for water? The aramid stops working when wet. It starts to become vulnerable and fall apart. Of course, it can be treated with some substance that makes it water resistant for a certain period. Here, it's already wet. There was no treatment at all. It's wet inside already. This is aramid fabric. In our body armor, in Ukrainian ones, if it's made of either polyethylene, high molecular weight polyethylene, of course, or aramid fabric, they're all packaged. If not damaged, they withstand rain and even immersion in water. Mm -hmm. This one, in any situation involving water, in a ditch or a swamp, that's it. The Russians are not protected. Here, they brought us our MTAC body armor. This is the assault body armor. It was developed for the third separate assault brigade. It served quite well on the front line. This is just a cover. There is no soft ballistic protection inserted right now. However, the technology is very simple, although everything here is made of mesh, which also serves as additional ventilation. There are several layers of mesh here. It's not several layers, it's just one layer. It's just a special mesh that we ordered. Unfortunately, the stock has already been destroyed by Russian missiles, but it was ordered specifically for such body armor. Unfortunately, as of today, MTAC production in Ukraine has almost stopped. Because of the Russian missile strike on our warehouses, all our stocks of materials for production were destroyed. So unfortunately, as of today, we have already laid off 400 seamstresses. What missiles were used? Three KH-101 cruise missiles, two of which successfully hit the target. What was the area of your premises? 2,000 square meters of production facility and 1,700 square meters of warehouses with materials. How do you estimate the damage? The accounting department is calculating it, but if you add up the cost of materials, the cost of equipment, 
It's over $10 million. But we won't give up. We're doing something and moving forward. We hope that somehow, with the help of the gods, we will recover. Thank you very much for this overview and vivid examples. I'm very glad that we recorded this video and I wish you success with your business. Thank you.